My first exercise is the incline dumbbell press. I like the shallow incline because of the emphasis on the mid and upper chest. The dumbbells are a bit easier on my shoulder joints. I start with 40 pounds and usually work up to 80s. My sets are 5 to 9 reps. I'll do between 2 and 5 working sets for my multi-joint exercises depending on how I feel and how much time I have. The next exercise is what I call a lat pull-in. I learned these from Doug Brignoli's book, The Physics of Resistance Exercise. Apparently, this activates the latissimus dorsi muscle more directly than any other exercise. Doug was a master of exercise biomechanics. We had hoped to get him on our podcast. When we tried to track him down to invite him, he had just passed away in the pandemic. He has a big loss. So with this exercise, pull your elbow into your side. It is sort of a combo roll and pull down movement. Chin-ups are a bread and butter upper back and bicep exercise for me. I wasn't going to show them on this video, uh, because I haven't been doing them lately, but Joyce insists that I do. She's really impressed by chin-ups, so in the interest of marital harmony, I'll show you a few. I do a very full range of motion. I actually try to touch my chest to my hands, which adds to the difficulty. Here I do a few reps with 25 pounds attached. A couple of months ago, before my forearms started bothering me, I was able to use a little over 80. When I was a young stud, I could use about 130 pounds. Next, I do a standing resistance band crunch. It doesn't look like much, but I really feel this in my abs. Ideally, think about curling the bottom of your chest towards your pubic bone, because shortening the distance between the front of your chest and the pubis is the primary function of the rectus abdominis muscle, which is the six-pack muscle. My spine has lost a lot of flexibility, so I cannot quite do that, but I really feel my abs squeezing. If you're going to use a lot of resistance, I recommend that rather than using one heavy band, you use two, three, or even four bands together. If you were to use a single band, and if the band were to snap, you could really hurt yourself. I use either three or four bands together. It is unlikely that all of them would snap at once. This is the first of my rotator cuff exercises. It works the teres minor muscle and the posterior deltoid, along with the mid and lower trapezius. When people work out with weights, the rotator cuff muscles at the front of the shoulder get too relatively strong. This causes a subtle tracking error of the humerus, or upper arm bone, in the glenoid fossa, or shoulder socket. This leads to pain and even impingement of the humeral head on the acromion process, which is a shelf-like projection of the shoulder blade. This next exercise, with my arms more directly away from my sides, works the rear deltoid, teres minor, and infraspinitis. I do about 10 to 15 reps on all three of these rotator cuff exercises. I just do one set of each of these rotator cuff exercises. For this last exercise, the goal is to keep your upper arms at your sides and rotate the upper arms away from you without lifting them upwards. Just use a light band. In short order, you will begin to feel the burn in the back of your shoulders. A few years ago, I had MRIs done on my shoulders. I have rotator cuff tendinopathy, small rotator cuff tears on both sides, labral degeneration, and cartilage loss from the heads of my humeri, i.e. osteoarthritis. Nonetheless, I am able to work out lately and get stronger. I believe that doing these exercises is why my shoulders are doing so well lately. Next is the deadlift. Technique is critical. Even on the warm-up sets, really focus on good technique so it becomes automatic. The back must stay perfectly flat. Address the bar with the shins about one, maybe two inches behind the bar. Bend over and grip it. By doing so, your knees will move forward and your shins will then contact the bar. I use a hook grip. My index and middle finger are wrapped around the thumb. This takes a little getting used to and can be a bit uncomfortable at first. The advantage is a stronger hold on the bar. You can use an alternate grip with one hand face forward and the other back. This gives an even better hold than the hook grip, but comes with a few disadvantages. First is asymmetric stress on the trapezius muscles. More importantly, the arm that is faced forward is at risk for snapping the biceps tendon. The risk for such an event goes up with age. Since I'm in my 60s, I avoid using the hook grip. Once you have a good grip, take a big breath and drop your hips, thinking of pushing your belly between the thighs. This cue will help you keep your low back flat. Initiate the movement by thinking of pushing your feet through the floor. Remember to keep your back flat, which is so important for injury prevention. 
No need to overextend once upright, and in fact this can be harmful to the lower back. Get your body upright and no further. When I started doing these a few months ago, after a long hi hiatus of a few years, I literally used just 95 pounds for the first few workouts, concentrating on getting the form back. During today's workout, I went to 255. I just didn't feel up for going any heavier today. That is a pretty basic weight, but it is critical to accept where you're at. I'm not 26 anymore. I need to be careful and progressive now that I am almost a seasoned citizen. Compete with yourself and forget about what everyone else is doing. It is about progress and not comparison with others. Here is something else to consider. As a radiologist that looks at CT and MRI scans every day, virtually everyone's spine degenerates with age. Is it better to have a degenerated spine supported by weak muscles or strong muscles? I prefer to have strong muscles, and lately my back feels pretty good. Naturally, have a conversation with your doctor before starting a strength program. Here I am demonstrating lateral raises for the deltoid muscles. Why do I do an isolation exercise rather than a compound exercise like an overhead press? There are a couple of reasons. Firstly, I have lost range of motion in my shoulders and can no longer get my arms straight up overhead, which would make pressing really awkward. I can revisit this if I'm able to rehab my range of motion back over the next few months. Also, the lateral raise more directly activates the deltoid. I only go a little above shoulder height because there is no further muscular activation beyond this point. I like to do a rep range of about 15 to 20 for these. Being an isolation move, the exercise does not lend itself to a really heavy weight. I have definitely added size to my deltoids using this simple exercise. Call me strange, but I like the feel of using barbell plates rather than dumbbells. Try to insert a brief hold at the top of each rep. Now for a few curls. I'm not going crazy here. I'm getting over some tendinopathy issues in my forearms that came on unexpectedly. My preference is to do chin-ups rather than curls, but chin-ups seem to be aggravating my forearms. Chin-ups have the dual action of activating both the latissimus and the biceps at the same time. If you don't think that chins can be enough to develop the biceps, just check out the arms of a gymnast. Here I am doing lie tricep extensions. Keeping the elbows pointed towards the ceiling in a controlled manner, lower the dumbbells down beside your head. Move the hands back up in an arc to the starting point. Using dumbbells rather than barbells or an easy bar reduces elbow strain. I'll show you a few squats. Usually I don't include them in the same workout as my deadlifts, but I'll add them in today for demo purposes. Usually what I do is two or three consecutive workouts with squats and then do a workout with deadlifts instead. Remember, I'm working out three or four times per week, so very roughly, I'm only deadlifting about once a week. I warm up with bodyweight squats and then the empty bar and then add weight with most subsequent sets. Take a deep breath in at the top of the rep and then bend at the hips and knees at the same time. Holding your breath is actually a safety feature for the spine. It turns the torso into a firm cylinder, which is stronger than just using your spine as a rod to bear the weight. Discuss with your doctor if you have blood pressure issues. Powerlifters squat a little differently, pushing their hips back first, sort of like they're sitting down on the toilet. I prefer to squat more like an Olympic lifter, bend the knees and hips together to initiate the movement. This works the quads more. Notice that my knees extend out over my toes at the bottom. If you have sound knees, that shouldn't be a problem. If you have knee issues such as osteoarthritis and this movement causes pain, you may opt for a powerlifting style of squat. Do not work through the pain. It is normal to bend forward when squatting, but like the deadlift, keep your back flat. Hip, knee, and ankle mobility can be problems for some people. If you have such issues, get them worked out before you start loading yourself with weight. Either use small plates under my heels or weightlifting shoes with a small heel built in. It makes it a little easier to get into a deep squat while maintaining a flat lower back. Squats really are a total body exercise. I have experienced muscle soreness the next day uh, from my neck at the base of my skull along the paraspinal muscles of my upper and lower back in my buttocks, quads, hamstrings, and calves. Squats are a great total body exercise. To reiterate, get your doctors okay before you start an exercise program. If you're older like me, you're not a spring chicken anymore, so take that into account. Well, there you have it. That's my workout. It's pretty simple, but it really works. Some people may criticize it that it's too basic, but sometimes simplicity is the best way to go. When it comes to working out, there's more than one way to skin a cat. 
I've worked out in a variety of ways with body part splits and whole body workouts, and they both at times have worked really, really well. Consider yourself an experiment with an N of one. My workouts are in a constant state of evolution, as should yours be too. And remember what Bruce Lee said, absorb what is useful, discard what is not, and use what is uniquely yours.